you. I jumped on, uh, let's see, two hours early and um, thinking I, uh, I got the time right. I was just two hours early and that's exactly what it was. So um, just to, uh, to give you a little bit, you know, we're sitting in Phoenix right now and, you know, I thought about what we were going to say specifically to you. And if it's something you feel like you want to take notes on and maybe just get a couple of uh, pointers down, great. If it's not, if it's just a listen and a feel, that's fine too. The first thing I'm going to start off with is what's your story? If somebody asked you, what's your story? Where are you at right now? And I would say that most of you would say that you're at the beginning of your story. Some of you would say, I just don't know. And what's interesting about every push and every day is it's new and you have no idea what it's going to hold for you. You have no idea what it's going to uncover, what you're made of, when things go wrong, when you get thrown curveballs, when demos reschedule, when they cancel, when you book more, when you get a $10,000 order, when you get a $2,000 order. You have no idea how it's going to look yet. So if you think about getting a notebook, a blank notebook, Think about all the struggles and challenges in your life that you already faced between now and when you were born. And you would be willing to bet that let's just say you pulled one out to when you were six, seven, 10 years old. You thought it was the most major thing in your life that you couldn't find your toy. You couldn't play with your friend. You couldn't be out past curfew. You couldn't eat a certain thing. And you were upset with your parents because they wouldn't let you. You think about 15, 16, when you're about to get your license, go through this journey with me and, and hold tight with me because there's a, a big point to this at the end. You know, I thought when I was 15, I was hot stuff because I could actually get my license and drive somewhere. When I turned 16, I had the ultimate freedom and independence that I always wanted from my parents, my life. I was able to start then, right? It was that moment of completion when you pass your driving exam, when you get your license, you now have that ticket. You know, when you think about your 21, and some of you I know might have an alcoholic beverage or two or an adult beverage or two, and you finally have that freedom to do it, and it doesn't become fun anymore because it was also that mystery and that mystique of when you were able to get away with things. Well, what does your story look like? What does your notebook look like? I'm at the airport right now, and there's a lot of people around. You know, they're going places. They're coming and going. They're, they're, they have things with them. You know, they have memories that they have in their life that we'll never know about. And they also have experiences that we're, they're looking forward to. And so the next few weeks of push, however many days that is, 10, 12, 14, I remember going through those pushes and I remember being really nervous. I remember being um, doubtful, fearful that things weren't going to go because when you put yourself on the line and you put a goal down, you write it down, you tell somebody you now become publicly accountable to what you say you're going to do. And for those of you who are brand new, that's the scariest thing you'll ever do in life is tell somebody you're going to do something because now you have to live up to it, right? You've got to take the action that's needed to get to that number that you're looking for. Now, some of you have written down sales goals that are big because I've seen them coming through on the chat. I've seen the $10,000 goal and I've seen I have 40 demos. Does that get me there? The answer is nobody knows until you actually get there. It might take you 20. It might take you 60. So the number is not important. The action is important. The commitment to that number is important. And doing whatever you need to do when things go south and you have six demos set up and four of them come through and three of them are no sales and you go one for six. You're going to have those days. And you're also going to have other days when you go three for three and you want to call somebody to celebrate with them and tell them how great it went. That would usually be your manager. That would usually be your accountability buddy. So who is your accountability buddy during this journey? What's great about it is if you sit down with them now, you're at ground zero and you can talk about your struggles and your challenges and your adversity that you hit. And you can also celebrate the wins. It's much more fun when you do this journey together. It's very lonely, and you're going to be on an island if you think you can do it yourself. You just can't. You need support. You need all of the people around you who support you, and that might not be your parents. That might not be your friends. Let me tell you what's going to happen with temptation. You're going to be right out of the gates, and you're going to be itching to go first thing tomorrow morning, and things are going to not go according to plan, and your friends are going to be like, why don't you just blow that off, and let's go out. Let's do our thing. You know, We've got a lot of summer ahead of us. 
We're doing everything that we want to, not everything that we have to. And those are the friends that are going to end up at the end of the summer with nothing to show for themselves. You're going to have to make tough decisions. You're going to have to say, you know what? Let's just wait until this pushes over and then we'll go out and do something fun and celebrate when I do hit what I set out to hit. So as your book fills up, your notebook, chapter one, here comes chapter one, right? It's going to be your first three days. And we've always seen this at the office level, division level, rep level, FSM level, CSP level. It doesn't matter what level you're at. I'm going to tell you that chapter one doesn't define chapter two unless you let it. So if you break this down into 10 chapters, what you're going to find is some of them are going to be more interesting than others. And some of them are going to be better. And some of them are going to be not so hot. So what defines a champion? You know, I think about the stories that I remember that were defining moments in my life. And I think you can maybe remember one or two of those that are defining in yours. Well, this could be one of those moments. And somebody once told me you have three major opportunities in your life. It doesn't matter how old or how young you are in your lifetime. Granted, you're going to be on this earth for 70 to 75 years. You're going to have three major opportunities in your life. So how many of those have you already had? This job might be one of them. This push might be one of them. I don't know. Well, somebody once asked me, how do you know which three opportunities when they come in your life? And the answer is you don't. You just keep jumping at every opportunity because you never know how it's going to be disguised. And so I would highly encourage you to look at this as a major opportunity in your life. This is a defining moment to where if you don't have a track record where you're normally used to pressure situations, other opportunities, things that don't go your way to really make a name for yourself. You know, I remember a lot of those push weeks where I remember 10, 20, 30, 40, $50,000 push weeks. Somebody made a name for themselves and they stuck the whole summer. People knew their name. People wanted to get to know them more. What did you do? How did you do it? And it wasn't luck. So I would just say, for those of you who are interested in getting lucky, which some of you might, might be one of those days, it might be one of those weeks where everything's going your way, I would also wait until you have that law of averages happen because that's what it's about. It's about the massive action behind what you want and how you're going to get there. So we go into chapter two. Let's say you're ahead of your goal, right? Let's say everything's going well. Well, that's when you put your foot on the gas. Let's say you're right on track. Well, guess what? The other action is put your foot on the gas. And let's say you're way behind and chapter one didn't go anywhere according to plan. It was a disaster in your mind and there is no way to recover from it and you're freaking out. That's the time to put your foot on the gas. If you watch the Phoenix Suns and the Milwaukee Bucks, the NBA championships, the Milwaukee Bucks were down zero to two. The Phoenix Suns are one of the best, most dominant, highest level chemistry NBA teams in the world. And they went up 2-0 on Milwaukee. The last three games, Milwaukee has severely, absolutely destroyed the Phoenix Suns in the NBA Finals. Now, I'm not a basketball fan, but I do study champions. I do study people. When the chips are down, what do they do? By the way, their star center just tested positive for COVID. So he cannot play in game seven. Sorry, game six. There we go. So what are they going to do? They made an adjustment that they're going to come back and finish out the series, not at home. They make the adjustments that they need to, to win. They find ways to win. So what are going to be your wins? I can tell you what your wins that you can control are going to be. If you make a certain number of calls, if you wake up at a certain time of the day and make the necessary adjustments, you will have things more likely go your way than not. The thing that you cannot control is what customers buy. You can have an influence, but you can't control sales. You can control your numbers, meaning what you're going to do to set yourself up for a potential sale. I remember talking to Johnny Abaticola. I know I can't spell his name right and sound his name right out. And I remember talking to him after SC1 and he goes, I'm going to do $100,000 personally in a push. And I looked at him and I'm like, are you crazy? I've known you for a while. How are you going to do that? He goes, here's how I'm going to do it. These are the actions that I'm going to take. So he wrote out his chapters before they even happened. He already had that clearly in his mind before this night ever happened. 
And that's what's going to define him. Now, what happens if he doesn't do 100? Let's just, let's say he does 70 grand for push. Most of you would take that any given day in a push and be okay with that. He thinks big. So here are some things. I'll just give you 10 steps. They'll be quick steps. And hopefully you'll be able to take the information and the work that you've already put in to set up a successful push for what you already have. And you probably have already heard these. It's nothing going to be new. It's going to be pretty clear cut. But number one is you have to have your number in mind. You have to have a clear vision on how this is going to play out. And when it doesn't play out that way, you've got another vision that you're going to implement. If you have a clear vision and you can see that number in your mind, and here's how you see it, by the way. You don't see the $10,000 number, the $5,000 number, the $20,000 number. You see the last person on stage as being yourself. That's what you're up against. You're not up against the person next to you in the office because I'm looking at the office right now and I see a few of you. You're also looking at the screen going, hey, who's my competition? Well, you got to look in the mirror for your competition. And here's why very simple that's number two look in the mirror for your competition the reason why you need to be your own competition is because some of you have stretched beyond an imagination to already be where you're at some of you you just don't feel like you're there yet i remember when i had a my first five thousand dollar push as a rep and i remember that wasn't good enough for number one guess how many people can be number one And that hurts when you're not, right? If you have that goal in mind and you're like, but I did everything I could. Well, you know what? Sometimes the chip didn't fall the way that they needed to fall. Maybe you're fifth, maybe you're 10th. Maybe you don't even place. You know what? It's going to be okay. The battle might've been lost, but the war can still be won. The summer is a long time. The push is a segment, right? It's a microcosm of the summer. SC2 is the biggest event that you'll ever have in a given vector and Cutco year. So are you gonna rise to the challenge or are you gonna let it pass by and watch others do it for you? Number three, who's your accountability buddy? You need to find your accountability buddy. As office managers, we always joked about the elusive $100,000 push. And Kathy will get a kick out of this because this is when we were doing like 50, 60, $70,000 in push. And we thought that was a good push as managers. Now reps are doing that. It's insane. And I think about the million dollar office, that elusive million dollar office. And I had somebody pushing me to get there before he did. And I remember every single year we would talk about it, yet we still would fall short. And finally it happened, right? It took a while to do. It took us banging our head against the wall. The wall finally gave in. Yes, we were bloodied. Yes, we were battered. And yes, our accountability buddies got us there because they pushed us past our comfort zone. So number four, be uncomfortable. Be uncomfortable. Growth happens when you're uncomfortable. I would just say that you should be comfortable with being uncomfortable. If people are telling you you shouldn't, couldn't, or can't, you're in the right place. If everybody around you is supporting you, get new friends. And they say, oh, it's going to be okay. They can console you. You need people who will lift you to the next level. By the way, <laughs> this is number five. Get a new tribe if you're the best in it. If you're a leader in your tribe, find another one. Because here's what's going to happen. We've heard it before. The sum of the five people that you hang around are going to equal you. And if you're hanging around equals, you will be just the same. If you are hanging around people that you're better than, well, you're probably gonna take a step back. And if you hang around ballers, guess what? You hang around millionaires, you might end up becoming a millionaire just by association because you see what they do. You pick up on their habits. You also like what they stand for. Now, this is the one thing I'll tell you before we get to step six. If you want to be a millionaire, don't hang out with millionaires, hang out with billionaires. Go to the next step, see the next level, hang around those people, find out what they do, pick their brains, ask the questions, be around them. You'll see that they wake up early, which is number six. I always get those a little ahead. Number six is to wake up early. 
Now, depending on what time you wake up now, I would just say this. If somebody tells me, and this, I, I heard this a lot from reps and I didn't understand why they said what they said. They just said, I don't have time. Now we talked about this at SC1. The people who told me they didn't have time, I told them they just chose not to make the time. They chose that action to not be a priority. Therefore, something was more important. So as I sit on the floor in this airport, we could have very easily said, my wife and I could have said, look, I don't have time. Plane's going to board. We need to get something to eat. We need to do this. No, you guys are more important. You guys are the priority. And the reason why is because you have a huge opportunity ahead of you. And to maximize every day means getting up two hours earlier than you're getting up now. I guarantee your body doesn't need that two hours extra of sleep for a short period of time. You would be surprised to know that most of us function on six hours of sleep. We go to bed at midnight. You're laughing. It's not because we have kids either. We go to bed at midnight. We wake up at 6 a.m. Why? Because our health is important to us. We go to the gym. Our nutrition is important to us. We make our food instead of eating out. By the way, our sleep is important to us. We maximize our sleep. We want to be tired when we go to bed. We don't need to be refreshed. We don't need to be woken up and lay right up in the bed, looking at our ceiling, wondering what we're going to do tomorrow. I want to go to bed tired so I can be refreshed and tackle the day and attack the next one. Number seven, eat for fuel. If you're eating heavy food, your mental and your physical clarity and energy will be off. And I'll just say this, eat for fuel. Sugar can mess with you. Caffeine can be a helper, just not too much. Eat light, eat clean, eat vegetables, eat fruits. You do these little things, all of a sudden your mind is very clear about where it wants to go and your actions will follow. Number eight, this is going to be fun. Embrace the suck. I'll repeat that because I don't know how uh, everyone around me is... Uh, thinking about what I just said. Somebody looked at me funny. Embrace the suck. When things suck, that's when you need to smile. When you're discouraged, when you're defeated, when you're pissed off, sorry about the language. When you're just upset because nothing's going your way and you feel like the victim, guess what? Embrace it. And give it five seconds. Always have that five second rule. If you ever know Tony Robbins, we've been to six UPWs. He said, how fast can you change your state? Just like that. How fast can you change your state? Just like that. If something's not going your way, you find a way to make it. Take the action. Somebody reschedules, that means you call three more and book three more or two more or whatever that number is, right? Somebody stands you up, you go next door. Somebody virtually stands you up, you find somebody else to call. Find somebody who has that next sale for you. You know, Grant Cardone, he's a very successful real estate mogul and he's worth a couple hundred million dollars we had a conversation he was someone who was very into fitness and so we talked for a little bit about that and he goes how did you become a professional athlete he goes I want to know he goes I'm 63 years old he goes I feel like I'm in the best shape of my life and when I was in my 20s I abused my body I didn't care about tomorrow I just lived for today he goes I was broke at 40 I owed people money it was not a good situation and things started to go downhill. Well, he made a decision in his 50s to become a millionaire. He made a decision in his 60s to become a nine figure net worth individual. It's never too late. Embrace the suck. Not everything's going to be easy. How is chapter five going to look for you? How is chapter seven going to be so much better than chapter five? So when we get to chapter eight, now it's really starting to get good. This is number nine, enjoy the pressure. Enjoy the pressure. I watched uh, the open. For those of you who uh, don't watch golf, I don't either, but I watched it. And the reason why is because on Sundays, I like to see in the final round who is gonna step up to the pressure. There's a young gentleman, he's out of Japan by way of the United States and won a major in his first four uh, tournaments. And the Open is one of the biggest, most longstanding. It's 149 years running. And he was two strokes up. 
He hits the ball into the very tall rough, and it was a pressure clutch shot, which he had to make and very easily could have gone the other direction and lost the entire tournament based on one simple mistake. He very casually went about it the same way that he goes about every shot with his caddy. He has his routine. And he decided to step into the moment instead of fold. And he had the choice to make, and that was going to go probably three to four strokes back if he didn't strike the ball right and take the approach that he took. But he did. Watch champions on how they work. Watch what they do. There's no accident that you're going to see the same people up on stage earning trophies and more money than anyone else. It's because that they didn't have magic leads. They did what they needed to do to procure the right leads to call them and to execute what they were trained to do. That's it. They know it's a numbers game. Here's number 10. I like this because this is a mindset thing. And this is what I was wrapped up with. I ended up training anywhere between 20 to 30,000 college students. And I remember in 20 years being able to say this one thing because Henry Ford said it. And, you know, when you wrapped up your training, I think this is still in there, Kathy. Maybe you can tell me. I don't know. But when Henry Ford said, if you think you can or you think you can't, you're right either way. If you think you can or you think you can't, you're right either way. We always talk about the little engine that could, right? I think I can. I think I can. I, if you ever uh, read, read, read that book when you were little. Um, I also think about this. I think about mindset matters and how your mental health is. And so number 10 is hit the reset button. Your attention looking for Customer, hit the reset button. The reset button is in the back of your head. You didn't even know you had it. And what's cool about this is everybody go ahead and take your finger. Everybody got your finger? Okay, cool, because I'm watching you. All right. I see three, four, five, six, ten. Okay, good. What I want you to do is touch the back of your head in between your ears. It's right here. That's your reset button. You need some sort of physical cue when you need that reset button in your life. <laughs> right? And you're going to need it a lot and just keep hitting it. Some people uh, do tapping. You ever see tapping and people start doing this at the back of their ear? They start tapping to get rid of the mindset that they're in to continue to pattern interrupt, to think about the next thing as opposed to what just happened. I'll give you a, a little bit of a story just to finish because I know we're about four minutes away. <clears throat> we ended up going um, to a casino. We stayed at the casino for four days. Got to the car today at 1130. Well, we walk up to the car. Somebody sideswiped the rental car that we got. I mean, just nailed it in the parking lot. And so I'm not going to tell you what I said vulgarity wise, just because you don't hear me cuss a lot. And Leanne, I saw her actually hit the reset button, believe it or not. <laughs> and I'm cracking up. I'm like, you did not just do that. And, she, and I was like, literally, when my face turns red and my eyes start popping out a little bit, and they go bloodshot. I'm about ready to fight somebody. She knows. So she just kind of hit the reset button and looked at me. And I'll tell you, all of that emotion melted away and I was able to keep calm, right? And carry on. So let me tell you the outcome of this story. I call security. Security comes, they're about two, three minutes. I'm like, this is great. I go, this is going to get fixed. And they go, I'm sorry, we can file a report. We don't know if we're going to catch them. I'm like, I have, I have a better idea. I have a solution. I've been thinking about this since you got here. You have a camera right up there in the parking garage, right? Well, is that face anywhere toward where we're parked right now? They go, no, it doesn't. But we do have another camera. We have an overhead camera. And I go, cool. Here are the times that we got back was 1030 last night. And now it's 1130. Can you run a freeze frame or a time lapse to figure out when that person hit the car. They're like, we'll do our best, sir. So he calls on the uh, mic to security. They found it within five minutes. They said at 11.05 a.m., a white Dodge Ram truck swiped your car and nailed it. In the rear quarter panel, a lot of damage. It's pretty obvious. Well, I go, where did that truck go? Is there biometric facial recognition? And they go, no. But the truck never left the parking garage. They went up one level and parked. And I'm like, all right, here we go, right? So the police officers got there. They took pictures of everything. And I will tell you 
that without the resolve and that little reset button, and the guy was in the casino, by the way, too, with his wife, and he admitted to driving and his insurance covered everything. That would have been a four or $5,000 mistake because I declined the coverage. My, my insurance might've covered it. The reason why I tell you that story is if you don't hit the reset button, a lot of the times your brain is going to be so amplified and so not easy to think of solutions that the solutions to any challenges are within your mind. They are not anywhere else unless you actually need support. You would be amazed at how your mind will work to find a way to your goal if you continue to keep it in front of you and hit the reset button when panic strikes, when fear strikes, when doubt strikes, when hesitation hits. It's going to happen. You're going to be let down. Embrace the suck. Back to number eight. So remember where your reset button is. Really looking forward to the challenge, ladies and gentlemen. And I really appreciate y'all's time. What's great about this group right here is you made the decision and the commitment to be here to spend a couple of hours and invest hours of your time to make sure that this week starts off correctly. I'm just going to tell you, keep your foot on the gas. If you're ahead of your goal, you're going to need to keep your foot on the gas. Hit the throttle, nail it. Number two, if you're on track, keep your foot on the gas. When you feel tired and when you feel exhausted and when you feel hungry and thirsty, that's when you need to focus. That's when you need your accountability, buddy. And if you're behind, hit the gas. Go full throttle. Go all out. See what you're made out of. Write chapter 10. Write the best ending of the book in your life right now. This is your opportunity to make a name for yourself. You've worked this hard. So you know what? Now it's time to amp it up. Everything that you've done in the past has defined you and prepared you for this moment. And I just hope that you are the last name called because one of you on this call could very well be. Do I know what's going to happen? Nope. But it's up to you. When you want to give up, when you want to quit, when it's tough, we're going to know what you're made out of real quick. We're going to see what happens when that person reschedules. What are you going to do? Book two more or just let it go? You've got the choice. You make the decisions. And let's see who finishes champions at SC2. So, Kathy, I appreciate your time. I appreciate it.